everyone, I'm Patrick Reagan, writer and director of The Unholy Land, and welcome here to a little behind the scenes. I'm going to take you behind the scenes, behind what we did, and how Unholy Land came to be. So, really, it all first started basically in 2015. At that point, I was in that phase where I was missing high school and just not liking college that much, and I was visiting some friends at band. Like, I was visiting them, like, for all time's sake. And I figured I was going to go, like, basically the year before that, 2014, I went on, like, a full script writing renaissance. Or it's like I was finished with my classes. I was finished with the very last math class I would ever have to take. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, I didn't do enough writing because I was busy with my schoolwork. But, and I figured I would never write again. I figured I was done. But then I just started, I started writing scripts and went like a full renaissance of different short films and feature films and different ideas that I started writing during that summer. And then of course I went back to doing stop motion because I didn't do a lot of stop motion since my senior project. But then, you know, I went and did 25 Cents of Stupidity and worked on stop motion for other films. And 2014 was a really productive year. 2015 was not that great until the fall, but during the summer and whenever I was out of school, I was going on like a full renaissance of coming up with different ideas for horror films. One of them, of course, was The Unholy Land. I was not planning on it to be like a big masterpiece like other ideas I had, but my general plan was to make something that would be a little bit cliche, make something, you know, a little easy to make. And so I decided, you know, I took inspiration from two of my most favorite horror films, The Evil Dead and The Thing, which you can see a lot of that in there, you know, it's, Generally, it's like Evil Dead because of the way it's shot and the fact that it deals with zombies. And then it's like The Thing because of the fact that they're investigating a place and finding all these dead bodies. And I was kind of stuck between, I didn't know whether I wanted to do zombies that came out of the grave, like in children shouldn't play with dead things, or if I wanted to do something like Night of the Living Dead and Evil Dead where it's people turning into zombies. So I decided I'd do both, and you see a lot of that in there. <clears throat> And so I wrote that, I wrote in some ideas, like the idea for the Hellhound came from like a little chapter in a book that I read called Ghost of the World, which I used to read from the high school library, but eventually got my own copy of. And then, like I showed it like to some friends of mine and came up with some ideas, but the film never came to full fruition. My plan was I was going to film it at Clint Phillips' house. Which, strangely enough, you know, I had the ideas of like a hallway scene that I would shoot separately, but then, you know, later they remodeled the house and then, you know, they had that hallway there, and so I was able to use that, so it was a pretty funny coincidence. However, you know, then, you know, after that in the fall, I started film schools, and, but I was still working on the project, and then while in film school, I decided I wanted to do a feature film, uh, excuse me, so I decided to work on the film The Summer. I was proud of it for what it was. After looking back on it, I was kind of embarrassed by it because, you know, I wanted to make a good feature. I was glad that I made a feature, but with The Summer Life, I felt it was just way too amateurish and not even in a charming way. Although I did start to see some charm. But so, like, eventually in spring break of 2017, I was hanging out with my friends and we were going to try to work on the Mindworms movie, but it was just getting too hot and we didn't have a lot of people. So I decided we'd get an early start at, uh, at the Unholy Land. The very first shot that I filmed was the scenes with Kurt in the hallway, just wandering around, listening to the sounds. Um, well, I like reading. I like playing video games. Hey, Matt. <laughs> uh, I, like, I like to shank a bitch. <laughs> that sounds like a Russian name. That should be a Russian name. Yeah, Victor Shankovich. <laughs> yep. Um... Well, I heard that my friend Patrick, who I forget when I met him too, yeah, same as Robert, we both forgot. Uh, I forget many things. Same. Ah, uh, the venue, <laughs> And, uh, so yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, I'll act in your movie. And then I found out it's the main character. And I found out I might or might not die. And like, hey guys! Yes. Aw, uh, get some. Actually, I think that one scene was actually filmable before spring break. But during spring break, I decided I would invite some friends. So I invited 
you know, of course we had Clint Phillips, uh, Robert Crowfoot, and David Crowfoot. Oh my dad's our friend. I was in like five I scenes. Do the push. Now originally there was going to be a guy named Roger. He was going to be played by Gage Foster, but Gage was sick at the time. But, you know, Paige Mishler's sister, Brittany, Paige helped me with, uh, he got served in some other films. Like, she was there, so he decided we replace his character with a female character, and I named her Renee. After a friend of mine in film class, and because it started with an R, and so it, you know, helped me keep track since the character's name was originally going to be Roger. Okay, well, when I first, how I first met you was because of uh, Paige and Nick. They are talking about how y'all were doing films, and, you know, I just thought that I should be in one. And it would be fun. Hey, dick's up. Simple, some Gage, you were about to drop it, Any it other questions? Sucks. I think that's it. And of course, originally we had uh, Jack Stone or Matt Brantley or Victor Brantley playing the detective, but eventually he got replaced with Robert Crowfoot just because, you know, he was very limited with how many times he could come and sometimes, you know, he couldn't shoot certain things. So he decided to just let his character go to Robert Crowfoot. I forgot how I first met you. And my involvement was because one actor couldn't show up. <laughs> uh, I think I met you when they were filming one day, and I was just there. God's You guys can hear it, right? Yeah. No, oh, no, not that one. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Copy <laughs> machine! <laughs> All that broken glass. What? <laughs> 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 What? For the other female character, I contacted an old friend of mine from church and high school band named Danielle Cameron, who's now Danielle Henderson since she got married. And, you know, I contacted her, and she seemed perfectly fine with it, especially since she was on my senior project. And she became, like, the main female character. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, so I knew Patrick from school and church. He was two grades ahead of me, and we did band together, and that was pretty great. And um, I was in his senior project, without my knowledge, at the time it happened, but you know, it's fine. But uh, we all call him Larry, and that's how I refer to him as Larry. Larry's a little different. We all love Larry. He's great. And he's like... He just messaged me one day. He's like, hey, you want to be in a movie? I was like, why not? Yola. And so I um, ended up doing this. And it's been a different experience. I've never done anything like this before, but it's been great. I really enjoy it. And I hope things go well with this because I would really like to do something like this again. I'd really like to do something like this again in the near future. So, yeah. It was. It was fun, you guys. Bye. <laughs> cool. So the first shots we filmed at Clint's house involved the scenes such as coming to the house and looking around it and looking at the, you know, the graveyard and everything like that. <clears throat> and then, of course, you know, during the year I was busy with film school. I was busy with getting my film projects done. So I didn't really revisit it until a little later during the summer. So it's like in the summer, I would, that's when we decided to get Robert Crowfoot to play as Detective Wilson. And then eventually, I got Danielle Henderson to finish the last of her shots. 
and most of it was filler because we were just trying to get to a feature length and this wasn't meant to be like a masterpiece of any kind just a practice film for what it was and you know in the summer we eventually you know finished the last of you know several shots like we finished let's say the church scenes we filmed that at my old church hickory grove methodist that's what we did for the interiors and for the exteriors i used miniatures to add to the whole german expressionism feel that i wanted to wanted to have and then sorry <clears throat> And then, of course, the graveyard scene, what we had was, like, originally, in the original script, it was going to be a graveyard with human bones making up the gate, but I didn't have the time or money to do that, and so we just used, like, a generic graveyard kind of look with a midget skeleton that I got at the party store, and Clint dug out this, like, this huge hole that they use as a burning pit, and I decided that I'd use that as the zombie leader's grave. Eventually, like, we came, like, to our last day and we filmed just some random stuff for filler, like, to get it to a feature length. Especially one day when it was actually cool outside, I actually went to Summerall to film a bit of filler for my character, Pats. And, you know, it's filler, but at least we kept it as relevant to the plot as we could. Like, that's the mysterious Mr. Enter's rules for filler, is either make it important to the plot or relevant to the plot or make it funny or make it interesting in certain ways, which we did. Like, another example of the filler was when they found the 8mm camera and played back the footage. That was pretty much filler, but it was at least relevant to what was going on, and it added one of my special interests and uh, director trademarks involving, like, old camera footage. And so it kind of added a bit of, you know, found footage in there, like, camp Holocaust level, not really Blair Witch type found footage. And after filming all that filler, you know, of course, all that was left was I had to, I had to just like, you know, I shot, you know, scenes of myself at Summerall and, you know, in this room, which I do with the typewriter. Like for the typewriter, I just filmed myself typing on the typewriter and of course I wasn't just typing nonsense, I was actually typing a sentence. I had left was various miniatures and stop motion and for the stop motion basically what I did was I was doing kind of what I did with an old short film because in 2015 Clint Matt and I shot a short film called Great Danger it's not finished yet I thought it was finished but it just was not that great especially like some of the stop motion effects I mean some of them were keeping some of them I'm not gonna have in there and so, you know, I wasn't, I knew these stop motion models weren't going to be as great, so I just used, like, lighting tricks and everything like that for Kate's headless model and the Hellhound, for example. And for Kate's headless model, I was trying to think of, like, different humor I could put in there. I was trying to make it where, let's say, like, in Evil Dead, you had the Linda, and in House, you had, like, the large witch creature. And so I wanted to think of my own type of, you know, female zombie creature like that, so I had the idea of where she gets decapitated and she's still talking through her vocal cords. And of course I did the voice of that, like I just tried to open my mouth wide and speak, you know, just with my vocal cords as if I was talking. So it's like, you're gonna die, her, prepare to meet your doom, it'd be like, eh ha ha eh ha ha eh ha ha eh ha 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 and just try to, you know, do it in the best way possible. Like, keeping my mouth open, only speaking from my vocal cords, from my trachea, not using my tongue or my teeth or anything like that. And that's probably not exactly accurate to how it would sound if it was just raw vocal cords with no head or airway passages or anything like that, but it worked with what we could. It worked perfectly fine. <clears throat> As for, let's say, the special effects, not only did I use stop motion, but I also used a lot of practical effects, some of which were bought from the party store, and some, you know, I made myself. Most of them were made out of styrofoam heads that I got at Hobby Lobby. 